Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I will continue sharing my experience in the property industry for over three decades as an owner, landlord, and former CEO of a real estate agency. Now that you have found the property and had it checked by an architect who confirmed that the building permits are in order and its structural integrity is intact, it's time to move to the next step. So without further ado, let's get things going. My name is Trafford, co-founder of Portico and Bridge, where we help high and ultra high net worth individuals achieve travel and financial freedom by becoming global citizens. The system of purchasing property in Malta is very well regulated and transparent. It essentially consists of two stages, the first being the promissory contract and the second stage being the final deed of sale where you physically take ownership of the property. Now that you have chosen the right property and negotiated the price and terms and conditions, it's time to sign a promise of sale agreement and choose which notary public you will engage. The choice of a notary public is always in the hands of you, the buyer. Avoid using the seller's notary even though the function of an notary is impartial. I suggest you also engage the services of a lawyer if you are not familiar with conveyances in Malta, who will guide you through the process and protect your interests. The promissory contract stage is crucial and most important stage. What you agree with at this point is binding and will be reflected in a final deed of sale. So what is a promissory contract? It's essentially a legal binding agreement whereby the buyer and the seller bind themselves to one to sell and the other to buy a property at an agreed price and terms. The terms usually are the duration of the agreement, be it three months, six months or longer as is negotiated. If the agreement is subject to a bank loan or bank sanction letter, then you have to include also the term. A bank sanction letter is an approval for financing from banks subject to certain conditions. Be aware that there is a significant difference between the two. I always suggest that you state in the agreement it is subject to bank loan. You would also need to specify the term for this clause. Other subject to clauses or if the agreement is subject to an AIP permit required for third country nationals or EU citizens that have not resided in Malta continuously for a five year period. It could be conditional if any works are still pending that have to be completed by contract date. Now let's turn to the deposit amount being paid and who will retain the money during the term of the promissory contract. The norm is a 10% deposit of the property value. However, this is negotiable. It can be, be more or even less. To summarize, essentially, you can negotiate anything and include anything in the promissory contract. I suggest that the notary retains the deposit paid until all subject clauses are fulfilled. At that stage, the deposit can pass on to the owner as from that point onwards, there is no turning back and you will have to face legal consequences if you do. However, the deposit paid is refunded if one of the subject to clauses cannot be fulfilled. Once the promise of sale contract is signed, you must also pay 20% of the transfer tax due. Stamp duty, as it is commonly referred to, in Malta stands at 5% as of 2022. However, check with your notary as there are deductions if you purchase on the island of Gozo and other deductions for properties in urban conservation areas. For the purpose of this video, we will use the 5% stamp duty figure. So on signing the promissory contract, you would need to pay the equivalent of 20% of the total stamp duty due. In turn, the notary will register the preliminary agreement with the Inland Revenue Department. Very important, 
if the agreement is not registered with the tax authorities within the stipulated time, it holds no legal validity. During the term of the promise of sale agreement, the notary will check the root of title to ensure the property being sold is lawfully in the seller's ownership. They will check if there are any mortgages, liens or hypotheques instituted against the property. And if they are, they need to be settled by contract date. If you are taking a bank loan, then the notary will work with the bank's legal department, who will in turn vet the file and give what's called a go-ahead for the contract to be signed and transferred into your name as full ownership. Naturally, this is always subject that a general hypothek, special hypothek or privilege secured against you and the property. This depends on the conditions of your sanction letter which could also include or will also include other conditions such as a life insurance policy etc on contract as the purchaser you would need to settle the balance of the five percent transfer tax notary fees root of title searches legal fees if you engage the services of a lawyer plus some other minor expenses the market practice is that the seller pays the estate agent's fees if you engaged one Today, we had a brief look at conveyance processes in Malta. At no point is this video reflecting any legal advice and you should always consult your legal advisor for an in-depth opinion. To end on a very positive note and very interesting to our viewers is that Malta does not have any form of annual property or municipal taxes, which is, believe me, excellent for property owners. For those interested in tips when choosing your property or an estate agent, watch the video in the link above or in the description below. If you have any questions about the Maltese property market, about property investment in general, please add them to the comments section below. That's it for today. See you next time. And as usual, make it a great day. Oh.